Did you know that there's a set of really early clinical signs and symptoms which predate the first onset of clinical MS by upwards of five years? That's called a prodrome. And in this video, I'm going to teach you about the multiple sclerosis prodrome. So don't turn away because that starts right now. Howdy. Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I started this YouTube channel to help my own MS clinic patients learn between visits. And it's my hope that through these videos, I can help you learn too. Today's topic is the multiple sclerosis prodrome a set of very early clinical signs and symptoms which predate the onset or first attack of MS by upwards of five years. Let's jump in. Take a walk with me going backwards. We'll start with relapsing remitting MS, two or more clinical attacks. Now, before that, we have the clinically isolated syndrome, the very first clinical attack. I have videos on this stuff and I'll throw links up above in case you'd like to learn more about how MS is diagnosed or on clinically isolated syndrome. Now let's go before clinically isolated syndrome. We know that in some people, they get an MRI for some other reason, and the MRI looks like MS even though they've never had a symptom. And we call that radiographically isolated syndrome. But what about before that? It turns out that there is a prodrome which can precede MS by upwards of five years before the first classical symptoms present. And that's what we're gonna be discussing today, the multiple sclerosis prodrome. Now a prodrome is defined as an early set of clinical signs and symptoms, which might indicate the onset of a disease before more diagnostically specific signs and symptoms develop. And it's taken from the Greek word prodromus, which apparently means running before, that makes sense. It turns out that in the setting of multiple sclerosis, if you look upwards of five years beforehand, there are in fact constellations of signs and symptoms. There's actually an MS prodrome. In this video, I wanna do three things. First, I wanna review with you the literature that teaches us about the prodrome. Secondly, I wanna ask you for your input. If you're listening to this and you have MS, I want to hear from you about what you experienced before your diagnosis. Third, I'm gonna share with you some of my ideas on what we might do to manage the MS prodrome. Let's get started. The first study I'd like to review with you was published this year in 2019. It's entitled, Higher Healthcare Use Before a Clinically Isolated Syndrome with or without subsequent MS. And the first author was Marie. This was done in Canada where they have a socialized healthcare system and they have a lot of data on all their patients nationally. And specifically, they looked in three large Canadian provinces. Now, what they did was a retrospective look. So they have all this healthcare data on people, and they were able to data mine it, to go back and then look at it. And they, they identified something really interesting. So to explain it to you, they first identified a bunch of people that had experienced a clinically isolated syndrome. So either an optic neuritis or transverse myelitis. Some of those patients then went on to develop MS, some didn't but they identified that group of patients. Then they identified a large group of age and sex matched controls. So a bunch of other people in the system that didn't have clinically isolated syndrome, and they kind of matched them up. So they have two cohorts of patients. Then what they did, looking through the medical records, is they went backwards. And they looked in the five years leading up to the clinically isolated syndrome, what was going on. And what they found was really interesting. The, the people that eventually experienced a clinically isolated syndrome utilized healthcare a lot more than the people that didn't. They had a much higher frequency of doctor visits, they had a much higher frequency of hospitalizations, and they were prescribed many more medicines. And this is interesting because it starts to give us a flavor that there's something going on or something cooking in the years leading up to a CIS diagnosis. Now the next paper I like to review was published by the same Canadian group one year earlier in 2018. It's entitled Mining Healthcare Data for Markers of Multiple Sclerosis Prodrome. And again, they looked in the Canadian uh, cohort of patients. Uh, this time they looked in two different Canadian provinces at people that ultimately went on to have MS and people that didn't. And they looked backwards at 
leading up to the MS diagnosis, what was going on with healthcare. What they found again speaks to this concept of prodrome. The people that ultimately went on to be diagnosed with MS in the years leading up to this had increased hospitalizations. They, they went to the hospital much more because of bladder complaints and because of spinal cord complaints. They also found that this cohort of people that went on to develop MS used medicines much more. They were prescribed medicines for bladder, for spasms, and for vertigo two to three times more likely than the general population cohort. So now we have a second paper in Canada, actually from the same group, which again speaks to this idea that something is brewing leading up to the diagnosis. And we're starting to see certain symptoms coming out, spinal cord and bladder. Let's keep going. Here's a third paper I found in the medical literature, again by this Canadian group, published in 2019. This one's entitled, Five Years Before Multiple Sclerosis Onset, Phenotyping the Prodrome. Phenotyping mean describing the outward appearance of this prodrome. And again, they're looking at the Canadian data set where they have a group of patients they've identified with MS, and they're looking at the five years leading up to that diagnosis. Again, what they found was fascinating with higher utilization of healthcare, doctor's offices, hospitalizations, and prescriptions. But in this paper, they characterize even further what kind of hospitalizations, what kind of doctor visits, and what kind of prescriptions. So what they found was that there was an increased utilization of hospital. There was an increased hospital admission amongst the patients that ultimately went on to have MS, specifically for nervous system conditions, for sensory complaints, for musculoskeletal complaints, and importantly, for GU problems, so bowel, bladder, sexual function type stuff. As far as doctor's visits, there was almost a 50% increase in utilization of psychiatrists and urologists. And as it relates to medicines, there was an increased prescription rate for medicines related to musculoskeletal complaints, GU, so bowel bladder complaints, and hormone-related medicines. This paper, again, gives us even more flavor to what kind of medical problems in the five years leading up to the MS diagnosis that people experienced. Shale and colleagues wrote an interesting paper in 2017 entitled Neuropsychiatry and Demyelinating Disease using depression as a prodrome for early diagnosis and treatment of multiple sclerosis. They really discussed the fact that the incidence rates of depression in MS are twice that of the general population. And they hypothesize that one could use early depression as a prodrome signal for possible multiple sclerosis. The, they conclude, at least in the abstract, by saying that future physicians may be able to use depression as a prodrome for multiple sclerosis and narrow down the prognosis of their patients, treating them earlier. That's a really interesting idea that I want to come back to. The last paper I'd like to review with you was written by a group of GI doctors, so gastroenterologists, out of the Harvard Healthcare System. It was published this year, 2019, and it's entitled, Bowel Symptoms Predate the Diagnosis amongst many patients with multiple sclerosis, a 14-year cohort study. What they did is they went into their databases in two different hospitals, and they identified people that had a clinically isolated syndrome. And then they went backwards up to 14 years looking for GI symptoms. What they found was fascinating. Ultimately, they identified 385 people with MS. And in looking earlier than their diagnosis, they found out that 32% of those people had bowel complaints. Half had constipation, 30% had diarrhea. Now, the bowel complaints predated the CIS event, the clinical event that led to their MS diagnosis, on average 3.7 years beforehand. And the authors looked to see what other associated symptoms these, these patients that had bowel complaints also described. And they were four and a half times more likely to have fatigue, and they were 1.8 times more likely to have sensory deficits. So I find this study really interesting, describing a bowel prodrome leading up to the diagnosis of MS. If we summarize the results of these papers, it does appear that in the five years leading up to the first clinical event of MS, that there's a prodrome. There are signs and symptoms. People are utilizing healthcare more frequently. They have increase in the number of doctor visits, they have an increase in the number of hospitalizations, 
they have an increase in the utilization of medicines. And it appears that fatigue, depression, bowel and bladder are common symptoms that folks complain of leading up to this first event. So this begs the question, what was your experience? If you're someone impacted by MS watching this video, I beg of you, share with us in the comments down below what your experience was like the five years leading up before your diagnosis, before your first clinical event. I would love to hear from you and so would the other people in this village. So please leave a comment down below so we can learn from you. So you may be thinking, well, that's great, Aaron. It's nice to know that there's this program, but what can we do about it? And it actually creates a bit of a diagnostic dilemma. All the papers that I reviewed with you were retrospective. They looked at large data sets and they went backwards and they found these trends. Well, the problem is we live our lives going forwards and that creates a diagnostic dilemma. And so let me at least share with you two thoughts that I have about how we might leverage the information about a prodrome to help us as we move forward in time with real life human beings. One potential solution is to use big data, gigantic data sets, and just hear me out. Theoretically, you could look at a very large data set, I'm talking about tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands uh, of people, and you could identify folks that have had an uptick in healthcare utilization. So folks that have an increased utilization of hospitalizations and doctor's visits. And in specific, uh, you could look for behavioral health and GU concerns. And if you identify those patients, you might then consider investigating to see if maybe they have early signs and symptoms of MS. And in specific, you could do an MRI. Now, what I'm talking about is a little bit of science fiction because these big data sets don't exist across the United States, for example. But there are large data sets within third party payers, and there are other large data sets, for example, in the Veterans Hospital. And so it's not like they're not out there. And I have to point out that asking uh, someone to have an MRI is not a small matter. It's expensive and it's, it's unpleasant. But I'm just trying to think through how we might utilize the information that we've learned about Prodrome to identify people early on. To take it a step further, maybe there's something we can do identifying an MS prodrome even without big data sets, without big computers. If there's an individual who is having increased healthcare needs, maybe it's refractory depression and fatigue, maybe it's challenging bowel and bladder symptoms, and in going to doctors they're not finding answers. Maybe in those patients it's reasonable to get an MRI of their brain and spinal cord. Again, I have to point out the risk benefit, the cost, because that's very expensive and it's not generally likely going to yield a result, but it might allow us to catch some of these people. And you might specifically target folks that are at slightly higher risk of developing MS anyways. So folks that are Caucasian, women with men, folks age 20 to 40, people that, are, that smoke or were prior smokers and been exposed to EBV. Again, I'm just hypothesizing with you. So the question of the day is, what do you think of my idea? It's a little bit far-fetched but I'm fascinated by the idea that there's a prodrome in the five years leading up to MS. And if there was a way that we could identify people early on, maybe because of increased healthcare utilization, and then find spots on an MRI, that would give us a window to treat them. So share with me what you think. You think I'm off my rocker? Or maybe we're on to something. Leave a comment in the section down below. If you'd like to learn more about how MS is diagnosed, check out this playlist right there. YouTube Analytics thinks that you would adore this video right there. And if you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please consider doing so. Just click the circle with my face in it. Go ahead, click my face. My name's Aaron Boster, and thank you for learning about MS with me. Until my next live stream or video, take care.